In this video, we're going to be going over myths and misconceptions of saltwater pools. So if you're considering putting in a saltwater pool or considering converting your chlorine pool to a saltwater pool, you're going to want to watch this whole video. I'm going to go over a lot of the myths and misconceptions I keep hearing, then kind of go over the pros and cons of a saltwater pool so you can make an informed decision for yourself. So the very first thing that I want to talk about, I wanted to save to the end for that big end of the video, poof, groundbreaking moment, but really a lot of what I'm going to talk about hinges off this one fact. And that is, that is a saltwater pool and there's chlorine in it. What? I keep hearing people say, oh, I want salt because I don't like chlorine. Well, guess what? A saltwater pool is a chlorine pool. It's as simple as that. There is chlorine in that water. There's the same amount of chlorine in that water than when I had a chlorine pool. So why do we call a saltwater pool a saltwater pool and not a chlorine pool? Let me tell you why. A saltwater pool has a little gizmo in it called a saltwater generator, chlorine cell, salt cell. It goes by a bunch of different names and I got a theory as to why they call it so many things. They don't just call it a chlorine generator. But the way it works is there is salt in that water and that water flows through the saltwater generator, salt cell, whatever the heck you want to call it, and it generates chlorine. So anytime the filter is running and the salt cell is turned on, it generates chlorine and pushes it into the pool. This means you have a constant feed of chlorine coming into the pool and it keeps your pool topped up with chlorine at all times. There's some real pros to this and a few cons. The next myth that I keep hearing is that salt water somehow feels better on your skin or is better for your skin. It still has chlorine in it, the pH is just the same, and those are the things that are gonna be affecting your skin. Now there may be some truth to this, and I'll explain why in just a second, but water's water. It's not gonna feel any different on your skin, and the tiny amount of salt is not going to make a difference in how it feels. Now, here's where I think this comes from. With a typical chlorine pool, you dump chlorine in it, and usually, especially if you have a pool maintenance uh, person that comes through, they chlorine the heck out of it on day one, and that chlorine gets super high, and it lowers throughout your week, and then they come back the next weekend, they get it really high, because they wanna keep that chlorine level up. So they have to overdose it, and then it slowly ramps down. So you have this up and down, and up and down, and up and down. With a chlorine system generated by a salt cell, you're feeding it chlorine all day long. So you're kind of keeping it at a constant level, which means you're getting it right at that point that you want it and not having to push it way past. So you're not having that up and down and up and down and up and down. With that also, with a chlorine pool, what happens a lot is you realize your chlorine level is low, you dump a lot of chlorine in it, but chlorine starts doing it, its thing putting off chloramines as a result of it eating up all the stuff in the pool, then you go in it and your eyes burn because the chlorine is actively doing its thing and releasing those chloramines. You're not gonna run into that as much with this because you're keeping your chlorine level at a nice constant as long as you have everything set up correctly. I also hear a lot of people talking about how chlorine pools are low maintenance or maintenance free, but you still have to do pretty much all the same maintenance that you were doing before. You're still having to come and clear out your skimmer. Ugh, I'm gonna deal with that later. You're still having to run a pool vacuum around the bottom of your pool. You still have to come out and routinely brush the sides of your pool. And you also still have to routinely clean down and rebuild your filters. But let me show you one other thing that you didn't have to do before. This is that salt cell I was talking about. These actually require routine maintenance as well. And I do have a video showing what all is entailed in that. And I'll have that linked up here and down below if you want to check it out. And you're also not going to be relieved of not having to routinely test your pool. You still have to test on a routine basis to make sure your salt cell is actually doing what it's supposed to and it's dialed in correctly. But one thing you will have to pretty accurately monitor is your pH. Because in the process of making chlorine, the pH in your pool will slowly rise as a result. So you will have to periodically add acid. In my case, I add acid about once a week. It's a very small amount, but I want to keep my pH dialed in so my chlorine's doing its job. Now here's a good news myth. Chlorine pools are expensive. They are not. When I spec this pool out originally, uh, when we put it in, I had it spec'd out as a chlorine pool with a chlorine feeder built into the filter. And during the process, I made the decision I wanted to switch to salt. So what was the price difference between going with a chlorine puck feeder to salt? It was a $500 difference. In the overall cost of a pool, 500 bucks is nothing. So salt pools, if you're in the process of doing it and you have to choose between one or the other, the cost difference is not that bad. And 
in the end, I would still argue that it's cheaper because I don't ever really add chlorine to this pool. My last pool, I would blow through jugs of chlorine like crazy. And if you've been watching chlorine prices, they're high and it doesn't seem like they're coming back down. Now you do have to pay for salt. You do have to add salt to the pool, but I added this season when I reopened the pool, half a bag of salt and that bag of salt cost me nine bucks. So I added about $4 in salt and that'll get me through the entire season. That would even cover one gallon of chlorine the way things are right now. And I probably will not have to add any actual chlorine to the pool throughout the entire season. Now I say probably because there are instances where you may have to add chlorine. If you do have to shock the pool and you want to get that chlorine level up really, really quickly, salt cell is going to take some time to do that. So you may have to throw some liquid in there if you need to shock the pool. Um, in my case though, I've managed to shock the pool several times without having to add liquid chlorine. And that's because as you can see, my pool is rather small and I oversized my cell and I oversized my pumps. So if I crank my cell up all the way, I can actually shock my pool without adding chlorine. Let's talk about what I mean by that because if you don't know salt cells, you probably wanna know. A salt cell you can have running 100% of the time or 0% of the time. It's not really a dimmer switch, it's the percent of the time that it's on. So typically on my pool, if I'm trying to maintain chlorine level, I'm running it at about 25 to 30%. So if I need to shock the pool, I'll turn my pump on and I'll turn my salt cell on 100% and in about an hour and a half, two hours, I'm at shock level in my pool. So I don't have to add chlorine. Now, if you have a very large pool and you don't have an oversized salt cell, then you may have to throw a jug or some granules in there to shock the pool. So now that we've talked about some of the big myths of salt pools, let's talk about the pros and the cons of salt pools. Now let's go over the pros first, then I'll talk about the cons. So one of the big pros is that I don't have to add liquid or granule chlorine to the pool and I don't have to run a chlorine float. It pretty much does its thing and I just deal with some buttons if I need to up or down my chlorine level. So that's a definite pro. In the end, this thing is saving me money over having a chlorine pool where I'm having to deal with pucks and I'm having to deal with chlorine and all that stuff. Speaking of pucks, this I don't really have to deal with conditioner or my CYA levels. My CYA levels, I set them at the beginning of the year and I don't touch them again. And actually in this pool, I more experience the CYA levels dropping than going up. And that's because water splashes out and in the winter time we get rain and it overflows. If I was running a chlorine pool, like my last pool, I'm running pucks in the float and it's slowly bringing my CYA levels up. And you get to the point where you have to do a water change because your CYA levels are so high. So in this, I'm never chasing CYA levels. I'm not at that point where they're too high. Um, I almost run to the point where it's too low, but that is a lot easier to deal with. I can just throw some more in versus having to do water changes. And seeing as how I live in a drought area, water changes aren't what we want to be doing out here. The next big pro, for me at least, is the ease of maintenance. I'm a DIY pool owner, which means I take care of my own pool myself. I do all the maintenance on this thing. So I come out once a week and I flip out the skimmer basket. I check my pool sweeps if they need to get cleaned out. That's pretty much all I do. Um, then I run a water test and I adjust my pH a little bit and that's it. Usually my chlorine's dead on. If it's not, I push some buttons, that's it. I don't have to deal with pucks coming out dealing with pucks. I don't have to fish my float out and top the thing up. I'm not having to add chlorine to the pool and I don't have to deal with all this stuff with chlorine. For me, it's easier. If you watch the video on how to rebuild a salt cell, I can pull that off in 15 minutes and redo it. And for me, at the volume that I'm running into this pool, um, I did it after the one year mark and there wasn't really a lot of crud in there. So I probably could even push it longer, but that's what I did. Overall cleanliness and keeping it clean for me has been a big pro because this thing kind of the chlorine levels at least take care of themselves. If we're going to go out of town for a week or two weeks, which we have done, I don't have to worry about adding, asking a neighbor to throw pucks in the pool or anything else. I just let her rip. Now I do have an IO pool float in here that does give me all my readings remotely so I can check it from my phone. And since I can connect to my pump, if I realize I'm running a little low, I can run my pump up. Um, if you're interested in that IO pool, I have done a video on it. I'm gonna do another one because I just got their updated one for this thing. It's a pretty cool little gizmo you throw in there and it gives you all your readings on your phone. Doesn't mean you don't need a test kit. You still definitely need a test kit. All right, so now, what are the cons of a saltwater pool? Now, first, and we talked about it before, is the cost. They are slightly more expensive than a chlorine pool. And if you're gonna retrofit a chlorine pool to a salt pool, it's gonna cost you more because you're gonna have to buy everything. Um, 
you're talking about a thousand to two thousand dollars for the controller box and the salt cell. But once you have that, you can kind of work backwards on how much money you'll be saving on chlorine over time. So that might not be too bad. Now, the other thing to consider with the expense of it is if you're making the conversion, will all your equipment handle it or are you gonna have to replace other stuff as well? Um, I know some pool heaters cannot handle salt, especially older ones. Um, some of the plumbing and whatnot can't handle salt because salt is more corrosive. So you're gonna wanna check and make sure that all your other equipment can handle salt before you make the conversion because once you've made that conversion, the only way to go back is to drain everything out of your pool. And speaking of corrosion, just by nature, salt water is more corrosive than fresh water. So even though this is a much lower salt concentration than the ocean, it is gonna be a little bit more corrosive. So anything that you put in the water, you do have to watch out for. Like for example, I have a uh, umbrella hole in my Baja step there. And if I put an umbrella in there, if it's a steel umbrella, it's going to rust and it's gonna rust a lot quicker because it's a salt pool. So you do have to think about things like that and then look for things like stainless and aluminum, which won't get affected as much if you're putting things like that into your pool. Another con is the constant raising of the pH. Um, like I mentioned before, the salt cell through the process of generating chlorine is also slowly bringing the pH of your pool up. So you will constantly be having to add a little bit of acid to the pool. Now, like I mentioned before, it's not nearly on the volume that you would be adding chlorine if it was a chlorine pool, but it is something you have to keep an eye on because your pH will slowly rise as you're running the salt cell. And one final thing is you have added one more maintenance thing and that is rebuilding that salt cell. So you've taken away some maintenance, but you've added some. So you will have to rebuild that salt cell about once a year. It's not that hard of a thing. If you DIY it, you can knock that thing out in about 20 minutes. So I don't really consider that big of a deal for all the pros that I get out of it. So now is the big question. After having put in a saltwater pool and lived with it for a year, would I do it again? Would I do another saltwater pool? And for me, the answer is 100% yes, I would do this again. But that might not be the answer for you. You need to take all the facts that I just threw at you and make up your own mind, whether a saltwater pool is the right pool for you or a chlorine pool is the right pool for you. Now, if you have any questions, if there's anything I missed, if you own a salt pool and you have something to add, please throw a comment down below. Help each other out down in the comment section. If you got questions for me, throw them in there. I'd be happy to answer your questions as well. Now, if this video helped you out, give it a great big thumbs up. That really does help the video and it helps the channel out, it helps us grow, bring you more cool videos like this. Now I'm gonna have a bunch more videos on this pool. I recently installed it. Like you can see, this is a smaller splash pool, which is what I wanted, but I'm gonna have a whole video of the process of putting in a pool. So if you've got questions about what the pool building process is, contracting, so you know what to look out for, that video is gonna be coming out really soon. But I've also got a lot of other great content on the channel. So if you like this, hit that subscribe button. And of course, thanks for watching.